Music and True Worship Part 2. We are continuing this topic because this topic is truly essential for these last days. Young people are on their way to perdition and elderly people as well. And many of them don't even know it and it's due to the music that they are listening to. And we're going to start today's message by going in the book of Daniel. As you know, the book of Daniel is a prophetic book. It speaks about things that will happen in the end time, and especially the story parts of Daniel. There's many lessons that we can learn, and especially on the topic of music. So we're going to start by going to Daniel chapter 3 and look at what lessons can we draw from Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar here, in defiance of the message of God, rejected the message given to him by Daniel the prophet. He decides to make an image all of gold, meaning that Babylon will not be conquered and Babylon will always reign. He made the image fully, 100% of gold. Defiance. Verse 2, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Notice he's calling and gathering all, all these influential leaders. Now let's look at some of these leaders in our day. First, it mentions princes. In our time, that would be royalty. Royal kings are called to this gathering. He called the governors that will represent political leaders in our world. He called the captains. Captains would represent military leaders. He called judges. Judges would represent the judicial leaders. Treasurers, the financial leaders. And counselors. So this would be educators, individuals who have a worldwide influence, a large influence on the masses. These are counselors. You could look, think of it in our time as public speakers. For example, someone like Oprah, who has a large influence on what she says many people listen to. Also, sheriffs. Though that would be the law enforcement leaders. They are all called, and we see all the rulers of the provinces. So this would represent all regional political leaders are called, all the rulers of the provinces. So this shows that the power Nebuchadnezzar had, and this story here in Daniel chapter 3 is the type, and in the future we will meet its anti-type, and it shows as here Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, is the papacy, and the papacy in our, in these last days, they're in close connection with everyone listed here, and they all do her biddings. Because in Revelation chapter 18, verse 3, the Bible says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth 
are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You read Revelation 17 and Revelation 18, you see all these global leaders are in connection with the papacy committing fornication with her, spiritual adultery. So Nebuchadnezzar the king gathered all these people to the dedication of the image that he set up. Did they come? Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So they all came. Now Revelation 13 speaks about the image to the beast which is the union of church and state. And the image is in opposition to the three angels' messages, which is proclaimed by God's people. Here, Nebuchadnezzar, in defiance, sets up this image of gold and calls all these people to gather for the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. In the future, the image to the beast will be fully set up and this image will speak by passing laws, which we know will be the Sunday law. Continuing on. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music. How much? all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So notice here, as we're looking at the antitype of what's spoken here in Daniel chapter 3, the three angels' messages, the first angel's message goes to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. It's going worldwide. But in opposition to that, here we see that the king commanded all people, nations, and languages to come. So when this universal Sunday law takes place, just as the three angels' messages go worldwide, this Sunday law will start in America and will also grow worldwide. But he mentioned that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet and all kinds of music. So we see now ungodly music played in the world and ungodly music coming into the church all has a part to play in do what? In gathering all the masses in the world to accept the image to the beast and to receive the mark of the beast. So music is critical. At what time you hear all of this music played, you're to do what? fall down and worship the image. And individuals in these last days are listening to what? All kinds of music, not godly music, all kinds of music, and it is setting them up for spiritualism that is going to come full-fledged in the future. We read Revelation 13, miracles will be taking place to deceive everyone, and by what they're listening to, they're setting themselves up to listen to doctrine of devils and what is taking place those who are filling their minds with so much of this music ungodly christian music ungodly worldly music if they open up their bible to read god's word what is taking place well now satan and the demons have those songs going in replay and replaying on their minds so since it's replaying on their in their minds when they're reading the bible they can't concentrate because their minds is filled up with the lyrics of all these songs instead of the word of God. And therefore, they cannot have good Bible study. And therefore, they are setting themselves up to go along with the mark of the beast. Because in that state, no way can they receive the seed of God because they're not settled into the truth spiritually and intellectually. Because the mind is clogged up with all this music that the devil wants them to be listening to. 
So we must understand that this issue of music is critical for these last days. We saw in part one that before the close of probation, all this music will be taking place on godly music. And here we are seeing in the type Nebuchadnezzar, all kinds of music. When you hear that music, you fall down and worship the golden image. And the music taking place in our world right now is doing Satan's work to get people ready to listen to doctrines of devils and to receive the mark of the beast. Verse 6 now. And whoso falleth not down and, wor and worshipped shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So if you don't go along with bowing down to that image, you're going to be cast into a fiery, burning furnace, which will kill you. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So we see the masses, when they heard that music, they went along and they bowed down and they worshipped that golden image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. In the time of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, thousands of Jews were taken from Judea into Babylon, into captivity there in Babylon. And thousands of Jews bowed to the image and violated commandment number one and commandment number two. The Bible only records three that stood up and did not bow. So what are we learning? Only a tiny remnant remained faithful. And so it will be in the future when the mark of the beast will be enforced. The Seventh-day Adventists, back then in Daniel's day, they all bowed down to that image. Those three Hebrew boys did not. So this is saying us, we know Great Controversy 608, a large class will abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. We know multitudes will go along with this. So this is why we have this in the, in the Bible. Daniel, the prophetic book of Daniel is warning us be careful what music you're listening to, because if you're listening to the wrong type of music, especially in the last days, your minds won't be clear, and you're going to end up bowing down and worshiping the image of the beast and receiving the mark of the beast. In the last days, millions will follow the crowd and break God's commandments and get the mark of the beast, because in the last days, the issue will regards to worship, especially the fourth commandment. But showing the type and the anti-type, Revelation 13 verse 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You don't go along with the image of the beast, should be killed. Daniel chapter 3, those who don't bow down to the image, what happened to them? Cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So these books in the Bible, Daniel and Revelation, must be clearly understood and studied by the people of God because history repeats itself. The image of the beast will be fully set up in the near future and music is what Satan is using. We must never forget. Satan led the heavenly choir. Satan and the demons that were cast out from heaven, they all sang praises to God in heaven when they were good. So they know all about music. And now that they're fully evil, they're using that talent of music, working with people so that they can sing songs. They know how to make the melodies to get people to love these songs, but these songs that most people are singing, they're the, they are the theme of these songs fall in three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These songs are not glorifying God. They're glorifying the lust of the flesh. Most of them, lust of the flesh, 
lust of the eyes, and of course the pride of life, when people singing about how much money they have, all the possessions that they have, all the love songs, the lust of the flesh, and of course the lust of the eyes goes along with that because look how many of these singers are dressing immodestly. And we are told those things which have been in the past will be in the future. Took place in the past, it's going to happen in the future. Satan will make music a sneer by the way in which it is conducted. God calls upon his people who have the light before them in the word and in the testimonies to read and consider and to take heed. Clear and definite instruction has been given in order that all may understand. So we have this warning here. Satan will make music a snare and we God's people, we have the light in regards to true music in the word of God and in the testimonies which Ellen White wrote to read them and consider and to take heed to what is written there. But sadly, many are not studying as they should the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White's writings on the topic of music. But this statement says Satan will make music a sneer by the way in which it is conducted. Now a sneer traps someone or something, a sneer. She says, Satan will make music a sneer, trap someone. Now what is most in most of these churches where music is being conducted ungodly? What do we see there? The trap set. We also see there the sneer drum. So how is Satan making music a sneer by the way in which it's conducted primarily the trap set, the snare drum, by bringing in all that drum and syncopation and repetitive chorus nonsense music into the church. Satan has brought this in, and the members in the churches are being seduced into carnal security just before the crows of probation, and they're not prepared for what is soon to come upon the world as an overwhelming flood. They're not prepared for it. And the reason we have to understand music, that the angels, we saw in part one, that the angels were singing praises to God and worshiping God. So the purpose of music is to glorify God. Songs of praise to God for his goodness, for his love, for his character, for his righteousness. Psalms 118. Verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord is my strength and my song and is become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. So music that is made, the purpose of music, the Lord is my song. So the songs that we sing is to honor God because He is our savior he is our redeemer he is our creator and he is righteous and holy so that's the purpose of music to praise and honor god angels worship god in heaven because they worship god as creator he created all the angels and of course as stated jesus wonderful beautiful character of love they sing praises to god for that we worship god also like the angels, because God is the creator of everything. But we can also praise God because Jesus died for us. Jesus shed his blood for us. And Jesus has died for us and offers us eternal life if we surrender and confess our sins and repent. But the problem that's taking place is that when people are in these churches, where music is now a snare for them, and when we have God's people who love the drums, now their minds is being used by the enemy, and they cannot, as we saw in part one, they cannot make right decisions, and because they cannot make right decisions, they listen to ungodly 
Christian music. And next thing they end up listening to worldly secular artists. And they say, well, this is not that bad. But what people do not realize is that these worldly artists are getting their lyrics directly from demons. And in the past, Satan was working slowly in the music area and wasn't coming full force as he's doing now in these last days. But we are seeing now that Satan is just pushing it in his face that these artists actually worship him in the music videos and even in the lyrics. And some artists have publicly stated that their music is leading people astray. For example, a rapper, a female rapper by the name of Cardi B, she said that these type of rap songs that many of these people are singing, herself included, these songs, she said, these songs are activating demons. So by listening to these songs, you're bringing demons into your area, into your household by listening to these songs. Now, who would want to have demons in your house torturing you? But these type of songs are activating demons to come and attack the individual. Another artist by the name of Katy Perry, she said that she sold her soul to a devil, to the devil, in an interview. This is what she said. You see, in these last days, rappers are even now acting effeminate and wearing dresses. So we see Satan is truly behind this music industry. And he because he knows that many people worship these people as idols, therefore he's having the men acting effeminate so that mankind can also, the men, cannot be true men. They would act feminine. And also, he's using them in their lyrics to keep people mind focused on worldly things and not to focus upon God. And like I stated, these people are getting more and more bold as we see in this verse that the Lord is my strength and my song. No, these artists are not saying nothing about God. They are turning people away from God so much so that the rapper Jay-Z in a lyric said that Jesus can't save you. And he's also been so blasphemous to call himself Jehovah blasphemy. So this is how Satan is now is just pushing it right in your face and saying that these music artists, they are mine. Beyonce, Jay-Z's wife, has gone just as bad. She's full of demons. And she also said that in a lyric, I plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. A lyric saying that she's using pages of the Bible as a tampon or a pad. This is how these individuals are so satanic. But millions of people are worshiping these people and listening to their songs day after day, hour after hour. These are individuals that many people who go to church are still listening to these people throughout the week. And we need to be aware of these things. And there was a documentary called they, they Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. You could watch it on YouTube with Good Fight Ministries. While many artists are saying that these lyrics that the pen just started moving and these lyrics did not originate with themselves, that it was just given to them from demons. Pastor John Loma came at 3ABN. He did a series called Unclean Spirits where he exposes all of this evil in the music industry. And people are listening to these songs, and at the same time, they also say that they are Christians. But we cannot serve two masters. These songs are of the devil, and we cannot be listening to these people. Now, I'm going to show you in a song how these lyrics are all satanic. All of these songs that people are singing originate from the devil himself and other demons. Barry Manilow, he sang a song 
called I Write the Songs. And this song is actually all about Satan. It's speaking about Satan, but Barry Manilow, he sang this song. Now look at these lyrics. I've been alive forever because, well, we know Satan has been living for a long time. He was cast out of heaven. He's been alive for a long time. Of course, not infinite because he was created. But the lyric says, I've been alive forever and I wrote the very first song. I put the words and the melodies together. Who is putting together the words and the melodies? Satan. I am music and I write the songs. So here, this lyric is basically praising Satan and Satan is here in this song, I am the music, I write the songs. Now remember when we saw in part one that how Lucifer was a musical being, his pipes and all how musical he is, he says, I am music and I write the songs. I write the songs that the whole world sings. People all over this world love music and they are singing worldly songs. But who is writing these songs? Satan. I write the songs that the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. All the love songs. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. They break up with this guy, they listen to these sad love songs, and then they start crying, breaking down in tears, or just the sad love songs. That's the power of music. Music can put you in a happy mood. Music can put you in a sad, depressed mood. Music can get you angry. Music can affect your emotions in so many ways. But here, I write the songs, I write the songs. Satan writes the songs, continuing on. My home lies deep within you. But Jesus is to dwell in our heart. The Holy Spirit is to dwell in our heart. But with these songs, who is dwelling in? Satan is saying, my home lies deep within you. I've got my own place in your soul. So the, through this music, these songs, you're giving Satan access to your soul. Now, when I look out through your eyes, I'm young again, even though I'm very old. Thousands of years old, this angel Lucifer, Satan. But he's saying, as he's looking out through the individuals, listening to his music through their eyes, he's young again. Because most young people are loving the songs of these worldly artists. But I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs. I write the songs. Satan is writing the songs. Continuing on. Oh, my music makes you dance. So we have music just to get people to dance. They love it. And gives your spirit to take a chance. Now, what happens many times when people go into the clubs and they're dancing and they meet this person and next thing, they take a chance and they sleep with this person and the next thing, boom, she ends up pregnant. Because when that music is playing, their morals, that's gone. And therefore, they cannot make right decisions and these songs of lust take over them and they take a chance. Many times, here is the origin point of all this for fornication, the music they're listening to. I wrote some rock and roll so that you can move. So notice, Satan has songs for every different class of people. Some like love songs, some like to dance, some like different type of music, rock and roll. Satan has lyrics and melodies for all classes of people upon the whole world. Because here, I wrote some rock and roll so you can move. Music fills your heart well. That's a real fine place to start. Music fills your heart. Well, that's a fine place to start. Satan wants access to your heart. He is the one who sets the captives. He gets the captives, but he doesn't want to free the captives. He wants everyone to be following him through the music. It's from me. It's for you. It's from you. It's from me. It's a worldwide symphony. So his music 
that he has these artists singing. It's a worldwide symphony. People all over this world are singing these songs that offer praise to Satan. And many of these people don't even know it. Just as many people worshiping on Sunday, the venerable day of the sun, Satan, Lucifer, light bearer, when people are worshiping on the day of the sun, that worship goes directly to Satan and they don't even know it. Instead of worshiping on the seventh day, the Sabbath, they worship on Sunday, that worship goes to Satan. And many people singing these songs, they don't realize that they are worshiping Satan because he writes the songs. I am music and I write the songs. Take heed, brothers and sisters, and warn others about the music. Now, when you come to music, there are three parts in regards to a song. There is melody, harmony, and rhythm. Now, if you put these three, music and the Godhead, three parts to the song, the melody, which is the driving force of the song, that would be like God the Father. As we know, God is our melody, God is our song, and we know in heaven, even though all members of the Godhead are equal, there still is a hierarchy. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 28 says, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, that is Christ, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that's God the Father, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So we see they're all one, but there is hierarchy. God the Father. Then we see God the Son. So Jesus would be in the like a song, Jesus would be like the harmony because harmony is when two come together. When different song groups, groups of singers come together, they harmonize. It's different individuals, their voices are going together and they're providing harmony, two or more. And Jesus, we know, is the God man. Jesus is 100% God, Hebrews chapter 1. And Jesus is 100% man, Hebrews chapter 2. So when you look at the aspects of a song, harmony would be like Christ. And last, we have rhythm, would be like the Holy Spirit. The rhythm moves the song along. And we know the Holy Spirit in creation moved amongst the waters in creation, Genesis chapter 1. We know the Holy Spirit moves upon our hearts. and leads us to repentance and we know that the holy spirit is also in john chapter 3 likened unto the wind but we can't see wind just as we cannot see the holy spirit but he is working within our hearts and convicting us and leading us to surrender to christ rhythm moves the song along and the holy spirit is in the background so this is teaching us here in regards to music, that the rhythm supposed to be at the bottom. It should not be the driving force for the song. But what the devil has done, as he loves to do, counterfeit king, he likes to flip everything upside down. So the music now, the rhythm is driving the song primarily by the drums. And that drum is driving the song, whereas it should be the melody leading out driving the song, leading the song, it is rhythm, that drum. And we see even artists, Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation. We are a part of a rhythm nation. And you see songs about the rhythm, the rhythm will take control of you. So this is what the devil is doing. He wants to everyone to beat on to follow the beat of his drum. And what's happening Vocals are being drowned out and the rhythm is leading forward. So this is a principle in regards to music. The lyrics should never be drowned out by the drum or by any accompanying instrument. This is why we saw in part one about the harp. The harp can be playing and you could be singing, but the harp is not going to drown out the vocals. Neither would a guitar drown out vocals but what will drown out vocals easily the drum because it's so loud 
that instrument banging on that will drown out vocals and that will put rhythm up front and people will be moving to the rhythm instead of the melody leading out. Satan flips it upside down. So God gives us lots of warning in regards to music. Angels are hovering around yonder dwelling. The young are assembled. There is the sound of vocal and instrumental music. Christians are gathered there. But what is it that you hear? It is a song. She calls it a frivolous ditty. Fit for the dance hall. Let's pause here. The young are assembled. They're hearing vocals. They're hearing instrumental music is playing. But she says the music that is being played is a frivolous ditty, and that type of music is fit for the dance hall. So that type of music should not belong in the church. She calls it frivolous ditty. Now, what happens with that type of music is playing. Behold, the pure angels gather their light closer around them. The angels are gathering together. And darkness envelop those in that dwelling. So when they're in the church, with that type of music playing, the frivolous ditty, the type of music that rhythm is leading forward, it's fit for the dance hall, music that wants you to dance and tap your foot and bob your head and start rocking from side to side. What is taking place? Darkness is around, envelops that dwelling. Darkness will envelop those churches. The holy angels now, are moving from the scene. So the good angels, nope, they don't want to be here. They leave that scene. Sadness is upon their countenances. Behold, they are weeping. The holy angels are weeping when God's people are in churches and the music is frivolous ditty and the music is fit for the dance hall. The angels are leaving. They cannot stay there when that is being played and they are weeping. And pastors and elders are allowing this music fit for the dance hall to be played in churches. And all the holy angels are gone. And demons is all in that church now. This I saw repeated a number of times all through the ranks of Sabbath keepers. Now picture that was written in her time. What about in our day? So in our day, everything is multiplied exponentially because sin is increased exponentially. And we know God's church is in this lukewarm state. This is multiplied times and times all through the ranks. Worldwide, this is taking place. Music fit for the dance hall. Angel, holy angels are gone. Holy angels are weeping. Jesus is sad. Holy Spirit is withdrawn from these places. He never manifests himself in such a bedlam of noise. Demons are taking over. Music, continuing, has occupied the hours which should have been devoted to prayer. Music is the idol. Now notice that. We saw in Daniel chapter 3, the golden image bow down, worship the image, or you throw it in a fiery furnace. That's a type for the image to the beast. But she says here, music is the idol. So once again, music is leading people astray from God, ungodly music. Music is the idol which many profess Sabbath-keeping Christians worship. So if these Sabbath-keeping Christians, music is their idol, they are setting themselves up to get the image of the beast. And they're breaking God's commandments because commandment number two condemns idolatry. Satan has no objection to music. Well, we saw in the lyrics of that song that he writes the songs to make the whole world sing. Satan has no objection to music if he can make that a channel through which to gain access to the minds of the youth. So who is Satan primarily targeting with the music, it's the youth. Because many of the older people have enough sense that as they lived and got older, they see that the, all music 
has gone down in morality and the music, they can see clearly now that this is of the devil. But the young people, they're liking how that music makes them feel. They're liking the beats. Remember, the rhythm is up front now because Satan flipped it and it's their idol. Anything will suit his purpose that will divide, divert the mind from God and engage the time which should be devoted to his service. So in time devoted to God is spent in listening to music. But in the Bible, we have God's song. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Now I, God, I will sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. This is speaking about God's church, his people. My beloved hath a vineyard in a very fearful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. Now, I'm not going to go in detail into this song because my brother did a message on the Cleaver of Truth YouTube channel in detail on this song. The message is entitled The Lord's Vineyard. I recommend you listen to that message. But the purpose why I brought this up in this message is because God says, I will sing to my beloved a song of my beloved. And when you look at this song, you see metaphors. You see that this is a prophetic song and it's showing God's love for his people. So you see there is doctrine. There is teaching. God's songs is rich and it edifies the soul, not the worldly music, not the ungodly music using Christ's name, but with the music is not glorifying God. So this is God's song, worthwhile reading Isaiah chapter 5 and watching that message, The Lord's Vineyard, on the Cleaver of Truth YouTube channel. Now let's look at the harlot song as we are contrasting that with God's song. Isaiah 23 verse 15 and 16. It shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten. 70 years, according to the days of one king. After the end of 70 years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Notice that. Tyre is going to sing as a harlot. Take a harp. A harp. But that's God's instrument. That's what the angels play. That's what the saints will play when they go to heaven. No, no, no. In this here, this Tyre is going to sing as a harlot. And she's going to take the harp. Hmm. Go about the city, thou harlot. Thou hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody. Sing many songs that thou mayest be remembered. So the context now, Tyre, was a area which did much commerce. And here, Tyre, she would do anything for the sake of profit. And in this respect, she was like a prostitute, just like Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. She would sell herself, Tyre, symbolically, metaphors being used here, for gain. She'll do whatever it takes for gain. But notice here, Tyre would entice merchants to trade with her so that she could profit at their expense. And here in this parable here about Tyre, she's compared to a lewd woman singing and playing and using song to seduce unwary men. Just like Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. So we see even God here is using music here, sing as an harlot, and as an harlot, she can also sing songs, but and also make melody, but 
it's not godly. So this teaches us principles. We are seeing principles in the word of God that there is songs being played, which has melody, but many times the lyrics are wrong and they do not glorify God. So Satan, as he writes the songs for the whole world sing, he will have some songs with good melody, bad lyrics. He will have songs with good lyrics, bad instruments being played with the melody and the drums, sorry, with the drums. So he plays both sides because his goal is to get everyone. Because so sometimes people say, well, the lyrics are good. Yes, but the music, the instruments are bad. And then some songs opposite way. So Satan doesn't care. His goal is to deceive mankind and he uses music. So for example, many times say, well, I listen to, I love Jim Reeves and I love the song, I'll Fly Away. It might have a decent fine melody, but what is the lyric saying? When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When you die, you fly away. Absolutely not. John 5 verse 28 says they are in the graves. And when Christ comes, he raises the righteous from the graves. And after the thousand years millennium, he will raise the wicked from the grave. No, when you die, you do not fly away. So this is once again, when people are singing these type of songs and not paying attention to the lyrics, but just focusing on the melody, that going into their subconscious, next thing they believe when you die, you don't really die. And that is the lie Satan said to Eve in Genesis chapter 3. So we must be very careful when we're listening to music. We must make sure it has the right lyrics and it also has to have the right melody, harmony, and rhythm going with it together. Now, there is a passage in the scriptures, which once again, I mentioned in part one, people look for any excuse to do as they please in the churches and throw out reverence for God and look for any passage as a justification. And this is another passage which people use, and it is Psalm 150. Psalm 150 is the last psalm in the book of Psalms. Now, these psalms throughout, there's 150 of them, they are songs. They are offering praise to God, and many of the psalms also are prayers to God. So any emotion, anything you're going through, there is a psalm that can help you. And if you look in Psalms, for example, these last Psalms, Psalms 146 starts with, Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. That's Psalms 146, verse 1. Psalm 147, Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 148, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Psalm 149 starts with, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And then the last psalm, Psalm 150, starts with, Praise ye the Lord. So these last psalms in the book of Psalms is focusing on praise to God because the whole books of Psalms are songs of praise to God. So it just makes sense that the last psalms in the book of Psalms are culminating, meeting a climax climax at the end of the book, focusing on praise to God. So the final psalm is a psalm of hallelujah, of praise to God. And Psalm 150 concludes psalms with a call for everything that has breath to sing an anthem of praise to God. And it teaches us that all instruments that are made for music and music purpose is to give praise and honor to God that the music and the music instruments should be all be used in a godly way to give praise and honor to God in a way that is acceptable to God as it is found in his word. With that understanding that this is the last psalm, let's read Psalms 150. Verses 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. So in the sanctuary, we offer praise to God. Amen. 
praise him in the firmament of his power. Now the angels up in the firmament in the heavens, they offer praise to God. Praise him in the firmament of his power. So we praise God as he is in heaven, us humans. And the angels who are in the heavens, they also praise him and they worship him for his mighty power. Verse 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Amen. Praise God. Every day we are alive is God mighty acts in our lives. We praise God for that. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Now it goes into instruments now. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. So now musical instruments saying use these musical instruments and praise him. Verse 4, but notice the verses in regards to the musical instruments is not saying that in the sanctuary. It's not saying or is not saying in the worship setting. It's just saying praise him with the sound of the trumpets. So once again, we cannot read into and put into things in the scriptures that is not there and put our own interpretation on the word of God. The Bible is his own interpreter and we take it as it reads. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Verse 4. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Now this is the verse. Verse 4 they love. Ah! Praise him with dance. So we can go to church and we can dance and we're praising him with dance. Uh, I don't think so. Now, actually, if you have the a King James Bible with the HMS Study Bible, HMS Richard Study Bible, and the Ellen G. White Study Bible, that word dance in Psalm 150 verse 4, when I look at it in my Bible, and I see the word dance, there is a cross reference, a footnote. And when I go to the bottom for that footnote, for the word dance, it actually is the word pipe. And that would make perfect sense. So this is one times when in the Hebrew word there, when the translators were translating in the King James Bible to English, that word there, they were struggling with it and they put the word dance there, but the actual Hebrew word there, and if you have a st uh, study Bible, HMS Richards Bible, and your King James Bible has the footnote, you go in the bottom, you'll see the word pipes. Now I'm going to show you how pipes, like a flute, that pipes make perfect sense with the context because verse 3 says with trumpet, psaltery, musical instrument, harp musical instrument, timbrel, an instrument. Then it says dance. But pipes would make perfect sense because another musical instrument. Praise in which string instruments, more instruments, and organs, musical instrument. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with high sounding cymbals. Now, once again, they say, ah, cymbals, the drum set. That has cymbals. Now we can use a drum. Does it say in this verse, we're in the sanctuary or praise him in worship setting with these things? No, it's just saying that all these instruments praise God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Now, verse 6 is the culmination of the whole psalm. And it's teaching us that everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So therefore, the musical instruments, the music is to praise God. And we cannot, in praising God, throw out fear God and throw out reverence to the side. And everything the Bible says about how God is holy and how we are to approach God, we throw that all out for the sake of praising God with any instrument. It doesn't work like that. We must understand the context that this is the final psalm, a psalm of praise to God, and we are to praise God. Everything that hath breath, 
praise the Lord. But we must remember, we must praise God as God says, and we must fear God, and we must not use Satan, Satan's methods, and Satan, how he is using these instruments, his rhythms in a godly church setting. That cannot be, because we saw before. That type of thing is fit for the dance hall. We cannot have things fit for the dance hall in the church and use Psalm 150 as an excuse to say, well, we got to just praise him, praise him, and we could do as we please. Absolutely not. We cannot. That word dance meets pipes, and these instruments are to praise God. And the primary instrument are the string instruments in the church setting, because remember, we cannot drown out the vocals. And we cannot have a person up front singing and that drum is banging and you can't even hear the singer because the banging of the drum is so loud. Brothers and sisters, Satan is working desperately to deceive the whole world. And he has so many tricks up his sleeves. And one method in which he's getting the masses is on the topic of music because they don't study it out and they think that, well, this has a nice melody. It's good. It's godly music. We must be careful and have the Holy Spirit to guide us in our, in our choice of music. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your truth. We know that Satan is desperately seeking to deceive everyone so that everyone will be lost and he is targeting his tricks and deceptions primarily in the area of music after the youth we pray that you would help to waken your young people to the truth of these things i pray that more leaders will stand up and preach the truth in regards to this topic of music so the young people will not be deceived help us to always remember that god is holy and we must worship him and fear him and always have reverence as we worship God. I pray that these churches with all of these drums blasting and this loud music, I pray that somehow in your omniscience, you will find a way to arrest their attention, to let them know that this is not pleasing to you. And we thank you for your word. Amen.